Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program The Journey Begins Part 20. We are well and truly on to the home straight now and uh, we've only got a few more modules for our Juno vehicle before that is complete so to that end we are blasting off from the KSC here in another one of our Brunel Mark 1 rockets with uh, Jeb Gwemby and Bargel along for the ride. Now this is a bit different from our usual, from our usual uh, Brunel rockets so you may have noticed there were some stabilizing fins on the bottom of the rocket and uh, the payload compartment is rather large, and that's because this is one of the fuel tanks for the uh, for the Juno vehicle. And uh, I can't send it up full. I don't think we have the lifting capacity in the rocket, so we've sent it up a, a little under half full. And uh, well, that's a lot of surface area for uh, relatively little mass, which could make the rocket uh, aerodynamically unstable. Hence the fins. Anyway, we are going to go and deliver this to the uh, to the space station where our Juno vehicle is being constructed. Uh, this uh, this fuel tank also has a number of other things on it. It has the uh, solar panels, the radiators, and the communications devices. So we're going to go and get this docked on here. Now, this is damn fiddly. It's a big, heavy beast of a payload, even when it's only uh, a little under a half full, as I said. But, uh, yeah, we managed to get in. We managed to get it all nice and lined up. And before too long, we have it docked. Then it's just a case of uh, transferring a bit of spare fuel from the uh, orbiter over to the, that fuel tank just to uh, save us a bit of a journey later before we uh, start to make our way home, taking that uh, that docking adapter back with us as per usual. Uh, we make our way down into the atmosphere and into re-entry and, uh, well, everything goes by without a hitch. And before too long, we are landing on some sunny, sunny shores down, in, uh, down on Kerbin. So that's one fuel tank delivered, but... Uh, I think we're going to need a bit more fuel than that. Or at least I thought we needed more fuel. Uh, and so we send up yet another fuel tank, this time with Curdard, Bob and Bargel. Bargel on her second mission already today because, well, she's the only engineer we have left on the ground. Um, so, yeah, uh, it turns out I was looking at the Delta V calculations all wrong, which means this, uh, this vehicle's probably going to end up with about twice as much Delta V as it needs, which... Uh, even by my usual Delta V safety margin standards, is a little excessive, but uh, well in for a penny, in for a pound, and it also means that uh, once we've got this to Juno and back, we'll have a vehicle that can go pretty much anywhere in the Kerbal system, which uh, if we do decide to rejoin this save at a later date, means we are well set up for that. Anyway, we come in to dock this one on, we get everything lined up, which is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a bit of a pain in the backside, even if you aren't borderline OCD. But uh, everything goes well. We deliver a bit more spare fuel into this one, and then we uh, then we make our way home. So our spacecraft is nearly complete. We have all the fuel tanks on there, bar one small one. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, things are looking good, and our crew makes its way back to the surface of Kerbin. It's mission well and truly accomplished. So uh, I think it's time to see what we're taking up next. And so we move on to today's final mission, blasting off here from the KSC at four times time acceleration. On the roster for this one we have Curdard and Bob, and um, well I couldn't ask Bargel to do three missions in a row, I thought that was a bit much, so uh, we went down to the astronaut complex and we re recruited ourselves a new engineer, so welcome aboard Dottie Kerman. Uh, the one name that I, I just looked at and thought, yeah, I think I think we're going to have to recruit you. Um, and. Uh, She'll be responsible for today's payload, and it's a bit of a baptism of fire because hidden behind that slightly saner looking fairing this time around are some delicate and, uh, well, somewhat hazardous materials, but uh, I'm, I'm sure she'll do fine. Uh, I say it was an easy choice to recruit her, there were some brilliant names. Uh, there was uh, Chuck Kerman. Now there's a name you could use to, uh, well, let's nip that in the bud right away. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, for those of you wondering what happened to the uh, to the probe we left on its uh, on its way back to Kerbin during last episode, that's still about eight days away. Uh, I didn't think we had that much time to spare, just to fritter away, but uh, maybe I was wrong. But anyway, uh, as we prepare for main engine cutout here, I, uh, I think it's about time we step things back down to normal speed for a little while. Right, so first things first this time, we are going to extend those solar panels. And then we can deploy our fairing and have a look at our payload. And it is the propulsion stage for our Juno vehicle, the final module for our Juno vehicle. 
Uh, I went for three nuclear engines in the end. Let's get ourselves uh, let's get ourselves manoeuvring. Um, oop, wrong way. I went for uh, yeah three uh, three uh, nuclear engines in the end uh, because as I said um, in post commentary or I, I I will say in post commentary. Let's not start that again. As I said earlier, hopefully. We've got uh, we've got plenty of delta V to spare, so uh, I went with three nuclear engines in the end, just to cut down on the burn times. Could have gone for four, but I thought let's uh, let's keep a bit of that spare, keep a bit of that spare delta V. I'm not quite lined up there. There we go. Um, and remember to set that as my target. Now, uh, yeah, this uh, this docking adapter which I've been using to attach the uh, Juno vehicle modules to my orbiter, that's going to be a bit of a pain in the backside a little later. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll deal with that when we uh, when we get there. How are we doing? We're looking good. Coming in nice and gently. I mean, not in not in real life terms because if you the shuttle came in at this speed to dock with the space station. Heads would roll. Um, where are we? Just gently guide it in. Maybe need to come up to the side a little there. And bingo! So we have our... That's quite enough of that. We have our propulsion module attached. Now, if I just hit the space bar now... Um, I said if I just hit the space bar now... Oh! Um... Okay. Everything... Okay, I think everything's intact there. Um... Okay, that was a bit hairy for a second. Uh, mm. let's, so let's get ourselves turned around. Yeah, I used um, decouplers, abnormal decouplers to attach these uh, sort of this end of the uh, propulsion stage to the uh, to the lifting stage, this end of the propulsion module, I should say. And uh, yeah, that um, <clears throat> well, that looked bad for a second there. Let's get rid of you. And fire up the engine. Yeah, well I suppose it's a, it's a bit of good news because normally in Kerbal Space Program when things look like they've gone wrong, it, they they really, really have gone wrong. But uh, everything everything intact? Yep. Okay, lovely. Let's uh, just time accelerating around till we get to uh, two hour purposes, then we can circularize. I think I'll probably go a little faster than that. Hmm. Well, that was a bit of a surprise and not a welcome one, but uh, yeah. Now, maybe should have come out of time acceleration a little sooner, but uh, not to worry. Let's start thrusting. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, and now we need to start plotting our course to our space station. Set you as our target. We have 0.3 of a degree. I'm sorry if you can hear banging. There's um the uh, next door having some work done. I'm not sure what it is. Having the boiler repaired or refitted or replaced or something. Descending node, so we want to thrust upwards on the map view. Yeah, so there's drills and hammers and everything going at a regular basis. So I do apologize for that if you can hear it or if not, don't worry about it. Uh that'll do. Um so yeah, let's get ourselves pointing towards that uh maneuver node. Try not to overshoot. Overshot it slightly. There we go, and now we just time accelerate round. Get to about... 
Uh, so yeah, the final module for our Juno vehicle. It's not the uh, not the final thing we have to do, of course. There's a uh, once this is attached, there's still a few bits and bobs we need to do. Um, we need to get the thing refueled for one thing. Where are we? Probably. Um... Oh, sorry for the RCS noises. Overshot that slightly, so just use the RCS to bring us back a bit. Um, yeah, that's looking good. And now we just need to plan our uh, our rendezvous. Where are we? There we go. And just bring this round until those rendezvous markers. 9.3 kilometers. That's a little bit too far. 0 0.7. That's much better. How good can we get this? 0. 8 3.1 I'm overshooting 1.9 1 1.4 0 I mean it doesn't make that much of a difference because we're going to be fine tuning it when I get round here um but uh, yeah it's always nice to have the maneuver node in exactly the right place Just doesn't it doesn't introduce any unnecessary errors. So where are we? Um, two, one. Ah, I suppose we should get ourselves pointing towards the manoeuvre node and turn off the RCS thrusters. So yeah, refueling is going to be a bit of a pain because there's a lot to refuel, but. Uh, it's not going to be too much. And there's a couple of other bits we need to do apart from that, but uh, nothing major. We'll get through that fairly quickly. Time to accelerate forward a bit. Ah, yeah. A word about this actually, this fuel tank as well. I'll, well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do the manoeuvre then. We'll, uh, then we'll discuss that. Yeah, because this fuel tank, um, as I mentioned earlier, hopefully. Um, we've got plenty of spare Delta V, so I didn't actually just fuel, fill this fuel tank with... I um, uh, didn't just fill this fuel tank with... where are we? There we go, with uh, liquid fuel for the uh, nuclear engines. I filled it with uh, fuel oxidizer mix, so... Um, once this is refueled, it'll be able to uh, refuel any vehicles we have attached to the uh, to the Juno land to the Juno vehicle, uh, like the lander, for instance. And uh, so, if we want to go off and do two landings or go land somewhere else, we can just refuel it from this tank. Um, and Bob's your uncle. Bob is actually my uncle. Um, anyway, uh, useless information aside, we're going to be coming in over the night side. That's not ideal, but. Uh, I'm sure we'll live. We want to be pointing target retrograde. Where is it? There we are. Yeah, so getting very near to the end. What's the uh, date here? I think day 216. I think it's something like... Um... Oh, crap. That's surface. Now I want target. That's better. I can't remember. I think it's something like 242 or... Was it 239? I'll, I'll double check. Um, wait until we're pointing retrograde, then we can just time accelerate a bit faster. There we go. Four kilometers, three kilometers, two kilometers. Make sure we're pointing retrograde. Wait for the burn time indicator. I'm going to see how good I can get it just using this. I think that's going to be pretty good. Oh, that is not bad at all. 
Right, now, manoeuvring this to dock it on is going to be really involved and a real pain in the backside, so... Yeah, previously I've sort of just done post-commentary over the uh, over the docking, uh, docking part of it, but I think I really, really need to do that this time, so I will see you again in a second. And it's a good thing we're going to four times time acceleration here, because this took me about half an hour, no exaggeration. Uh, and those workmen next door didn't leave for hours. Oh, and uh, at day 235 is our launch window. Anyway, uh, we get our propulsion module docked onto the side here. This is all part of the uh, the maneuvers necessary to get rid of that docking adapter. Uh, from here, we swing our orbital vehicle around and dock it onto that other side docking port. And then we can actually dock the uh, dock the docking adapter back onto the uh, back onto the Juno vehicle where uh, where the propulsion module was just docked a minute ago. And then starts the process of actually manoeuvring this thing. And my God, it's so heavy and difficult to manoeuvre. But, uh, well, eventually we get it manoeuvred into place. And uh, it took us so long that we actually uh, we actually lost the daylight. So we uh, we uh, transfer some fuel across. And then it's time to uh, then it's time to bring ourselves back round into the daylight before we move on to the next part of our mission. Um, now, I said in the live commentary, I'll see you again in a second. Well, uh, turns out I was lying, because after we've docked this, there's not really much else to do. So we uh, we decide to wend our merry way back to Kerbin. Uh, we get rid of all the uh, all the bric-a-brac -brac we have attached to the uh, attached to the command module, as usual. And we, uh, we make our way into the atmosphere. Things started to look a little hairy a little later on, because... Uh, well, they're coming down over a mountainous region, and not far from the KSC, actually, and uh, these landings can sometimes be tricky, but uh, in the end we do manage to land on a nice flat piece of ground, so uh, we are home safely, and all the major components of our Juno vehicle are now assembled in orbit. We just need to uh, put in those finishing touches, get it fueled up, get the crew up there, and we are ready to go, but uh, that'll have to be for another day, I think. So until then, thanks for watching, take care. And I'll see you next time.